Well, godparents, parents, it's very interesting, the, uh, the celebration of baptism. Usually when it comes to a celebration of church, how does a, a, a celebration begin? Got to do a little trivia. Usually it starts with the sign of the cross, right? Everything we do, other people follow. Well, we don't do that with baptism. Baptism, it starts out with a bunch of questions. We, we go through an interrogation, you know. And the sign of the cross is coming. But the way that we always recognize it as a reality that is in the church, and that is that God has given the gift of life, and it's a, a precious gift, to mom and dad. And of course, the church will always bow down to mom and dad. It comes to Jacob. This is a gift that God has given to us, and the church will never overstep its bounds. So, what the church does do in its baptism, it starts with a bunch of questions. It basically goes like this Can I do this? And they have to say, Yes, you can do this. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, we're sure you want to do this. Are you really sure you know what you're doing? Yes, we're really sure we know what you're doing. Well, okay, by your permission, I'll advance. I'll, I'll, I'll continue on by what you want. You know, so. Oh, and it's such a beautiful thing to remember. You, you are the, the, the parents of this child. And it is going to be yes, your responsibility to raise you, not only just physically and, and uh, within our, our material world, but also spiritually. So the ceremony begins. Let us stand together, if we will, as a, as a body of Christ, praying for uh, parents, godparents. Your parents, godparents, your family has. Experience great joy at the birth of your child, and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy is brought to uh, you to the church, uh, and brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gifts of the gift of your child and to celebrate a new birth through the waters of baptism. This community rejoices with you, for today the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased. And we offer you our support in uh, raising your child in the practice of the faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to break out to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for this child and her family, and renewing our commitment to the Lord and his people. So long and dad. What name do you give your child? What do you ask of God's church or of Jane Elizabeth? In asking the, uh, for baptism of your child, you are undertaking the responsibility of raising her in the faith so that keeping God's commandment that she may love the Lord and her neighbor as Christ loves. Do you understand this responsibility? Now, the godparents, are you ready to help the parents of this child in their need? Jane Elizabeth, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In her name, I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior. Then, and after me, your parents and godparents will do the same. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. People were bringing their children to Jesus that he may touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen. I say to you, Whoever does not accept the, uh, the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them, blessed them, and placed his hands on them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. And you may be seated, except for parents and godparents who just stand here. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll just have a, a slight uh, comment. I always advise it, and it is it really is a biblical gospel because uh, one thing that we always have to remember is, is that God does. He wants us to be to uh, come to Him, especially as child, be childlike, not childish, but childlike. And that's what it's so beautiful about having a child. A constant reminder of how we're supposed to be acting before God. And, and of course, with Jay, what do you see? You see a child who's nervous and it's, you know, no, completely calm. Why? Because mom and dad have everything they can care of. That's trusting. That's the idea of what God is saying to us. Be childlike. Trust me. Trust me. And of course, uh, if you can do anything to Jade whatsoever, she'll, she'll go along with whatever goes on. She has complete and total trust. Me. And in that, how I should respond, of course, is to you know, obey. Okay, obedience isn't a, 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 a thing that, that uh, shackles us, but rather it gives us a lot of freedom. And we can trust God along the way. And so as a result, uh, I always love it in the Gospel of Mark because it says, uh, here we have the uh, apostles trying to keep the kids away from Jesus so he can probably uh, just keep his sanity, you know, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. We have a lot of kids with a lot of freedom. And, and it's a really an interesting word, the word that Mark uses. The moment that Jesus saw this, Jesus became indignant. Now, that's a very gentle word in Greek that translated it into the English. It's a lot harsh. I mean, he was really mad. Stop that. Stop that. Let the children come to you. Now, one of the things that is interesting with uh, baptism is, and I mean, we do find this with our uh, um, brothers and sisters uh, of other faiths, they don't understand the faith of baptism. Their, their attitude is, hold it now, Father, uh, shouldn't uh, Jay be uh, accepting the faith on her own? I mean, really, uh, uh, before Jesus could do any miracles, there had to be a sign of faith. There had to be a, a faith to, to, uh, to be present in order for a miracle to occur. And it surprises people when I say, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. There has to be faith present. But then, of course, I remind them of the other part of the Gospel of Mark. And, of course, that is the Gospel of, where a paralytic uh, comes to Jesus. Now, how does a paralytic come to Jesus? Does anybody remember that story? Now, how is it possible for a paralytic to come to Jesus? Well, he had four friends who brought him to Jesus, and they discovered that the doors were, were, uh, were filled up with people. So what was the solution of the four friends, do you remember? They climbed on top of the roof and punched a hole through the ceiling. We felt, we always felt sorry for the guy who was the owner of the house, right? They punched a hole in the ceiling. And what do they do? They dropped the paralytic in front of Jesus on his mat. Gross. And of course, what is so significant with that story is uh, when you see where Jesus sees the paralytic, he, uh, he was able to do a miracle. He, he was able to cure him. But the interesting thing is, he very rarely did he, they even talk to the paralytic. You go back and look at the gospel. It says, when Jesus saw the faith of the paralytic, when Jesus saw the faith of the friends, when Jesus saw the faith of the friends, he looked at the paralytic and said, Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are that's what and that's and the significance of that is what you're doing. This is why we have a gathering of the faith. You're the friends of Jacob. And because of your faith, you are able to advance and bring this child to Jesus and not to interfere. So this is why infant baptism is so important to us, as, especially as Catholic and Orthodox Christians. So with that in mind now, we're not realizing the, the, the role you are playing here. I ask you now to, to continue to pray as we uh, continue on with the baptism celebration. And of course, I always remind people too, I don't want Jesus to get mad at me, so uh, the sooner he's she baptized, the better. So please stand again, and for those that are, who, who's not Catholic, uh, we call it Catholic calisthenics, it gets the blood circulating up and down. So, so we stand together now and, and ask God, dear brothers and sisters, let us invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for this child about to receive the grace of baptism, and for her parents and not parents and all the baptized. And of course, the response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Give this child new birth in baptism through the radiant divine. Uh, 
radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection and joined her to your holy church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Make her a faithful disciple and a witness of your gospel through baptism and confirmation. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Lead her through holiness of life uh, to the joys of the heavenly kingdom. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Make her parents and godparents a shining example of the faith in, uh, to this child. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Keep her family always in your love. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. And renew the grace of baptism in each of us. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. And of course, as we said in the Nicene Creed of Mass today, we believe in a church that is visible and invisible, a world that is visible and invisible, and recognizing the, the reality that it is the church and all the, the churches present with us today, let us call forward the saints who are joined us. There are so many uh, angels and saints with us, as a matter of fact, that was going outside the door. We just don't even have room for, for all of them who are attending with us. So let us call forward the, the saints to be with us and, and to uh, be here at, uh, for Jay and the parents as well. So we, our response is, well, uh, pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. St. John the Baptist, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Peter and St. Paul, pray for us. And of course, uh, we have here too, I made a list here to add on to it too. St. Elizabeth of Hungary, pray for us. St. Elizabeth, uh, cousin of Mary, pray for us. Uh, St. George, pray for us. Uh, let's see, St. Herbert, pray for us. St. Uh, uh, Gemma, pray for us. You are St. Herbert and St. Uh, Gemma, my wife, Mary, remember them? Their confirmation names, those are the ones that they chose for confirmation. So they're here with you too, you know. They're so proud of the fact that you're here with them. So it shows that you're with your confirmation stuck. And of course, anybody else that we want to think of? St. Wilfred, pray for us. St. Uh, 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 Charles Barbeo, pray for us. St. Classes, pray for us. Anybody else that we would like to add on? So we'll cover everybody by saying, all you holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. And now, of course, we enter into the, the light of exorcism, and unlike the movie, it's not as dramatic, you know, but nonetheless, it is something that we remind ourselves that, that yes, uh, unlike Jesus and Mary, we were born in original sin. It's part of our original DNA. The evil one tries to take claim to all of us, but now, by the, in the name of Jesus Christ, we, we do pray uh, that uh, this child be delivered from the evil one's power and and be presented to God and amongst his membership. So almighty and ever-living God, who sent your Son into the world to drive out from, from us the power of Satan and the spirit of evil, and bring the human race rescued from darkness into, a marvel, into the marvelous kingdom of your, of your light, we humbly beseech you to free this child from original sin and make her the temple of your glory and to grant uh, that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation. And in the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And so now we are going to use the, uh, uh, the oil of the catechumen. And this, of course, is the oil that was uh, blessed by Bishop Donald at uh, the prison mass. So I need you to help me if you will just get to a chest, if you will. Now comes the question because uh, uh, my, my godparents and parents did such a beautiful job in preparing. Uh, what is the, why do we use oil? You think that would be right away using water. Why is oil used at this point? And the answer is it is a symbol of strength. 
So if you think about it, uh, 2,000 years ago, the physician was called, uh, somebody was ill, but would be carrying with them a little satchel, and in that satchel would be little vials of oil imbued with uh, uh, herbs, so the infection could be cleaned. Uh, the Olympians, for instance, they would bathe themselves in oil. Uh, so the way to understand it is suntan lotion. What, what does suntan lotion do for you? It protects, it, it uh, nourishes, it, it gives healing. So with that in mind, we use that sign as well in the way here. I'm here as well. Almost done. Almost done. We're going to get the devil out of here. May the strength of Christ, the Savior, protect you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now you can be seated, if you will, or stand if you want to see the baptism. But now we enter into the baptismal celebration. So let us pray, brothers and sisters, that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. Now we have the blessing of the water that is going to be used in the uh, baptismal right here. This is the water that was used at Easter. And O oh God, who by the invisible power uh, by the invisible power accomplish a wonderful, a wonderful effect through sacramental science, and you in the many ways have prepared water, uh, prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even now uh, take, uh, then take to itself the power of, to sanctify O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood uh, overshadowed or, or, or the regeneration, so from this mystery of one and the same element of water should come in an end to uh, uh, come, uh, would come to end uh, to uh, come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O oh God, who caused the children of Abraham by passing dry shrubs, dry sod through the Red Sea, so that, that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of baptism. O God, whose son baptized by John by the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit and has hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive uh, by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that the uh, human nature created in your image and washed clean through sacrament, the sacrament of baptism, from all the squalor of uh, the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life uh, to the life of a newborn child, children through the waters of the through the water and Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, we pray, come down uh, come down through your Son into this into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism, by baptism into death, may rise again with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So dear parents and godparents, 
Through the sacrament of baptism, the child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must try to bring her up in the faith so that this divine life might be preserved from the uh, contagion of sin and may grow in her day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess faith in Jesus Christ, the faith of the church in which this child, uh, this child in which children are baptized. So I ask you, and this is the response, it's just like a wedding, the Jews. There you go. Do you renounce Satan? And all his works and all his empty show. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered a death, and was buried, and rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic uh, the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the response of everybody is, Amen. Very good. You know exactly what to do here. So again, like I said, I don't do anything without your permission. Is it your will, therefore, that Jane and Elizabeth should receive baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all professed in? So I now ask you to bring her forward, and there's our camera person. You might have to get a right shot here. To get the, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I'm not, I'm not responsible for a bad picture. Okay, so now, Mom, you come over here and uh, try to reach over, and I'll try to make it as easy as possible here. Now, Dad, and so we'll go ahead and put her over. Font, if you will. And now, uh, grandparents, godparents, you get in here too. And touch, just touch in the deep way. And my, uh, my book here, in here. Okay, we all set. J. Elizabeth. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God, Mother, do your duty. Very good. Now you can pull her back. Well, I guess I take that back. I always do this. So go ahead and uh, pour, pour it back there. Pour it in. I like to use, but not to give yourself a few seconds here. Now, what we do is we have the anointing of prison oil. Now, prison oil was used in your life at one time. That was at, at confirmation, right? And what is the significance of the prison? You remember? What's another word for this? What we get, what's the word we use in the 21st century for prison? Perfume. The most expensive perfume she's going to wear, as a matter of fact. This was the uh, uh, prison that uh, uh, Bishop Donald consecrated uh, at, uh, uh, at the prison. Usually on a Thursday. And of course, it is the end oil, but what is it imbued with? What is it that is imbued in the oil? Is it the herbs? Or which one? Anybody know? No. The gift that was given by the wise men. That's the key ingredient to what we have here. Remember, we're reminding ourselves of him. We are going to all be, we're all going to die. But of course, God gives us strength even at the most difficult times. What a beautiful thing to give to God. 
So with that, it's also a, the prison blood is also a sign of the Holy Spirit. So two weeks from now, when it's happening, so what is that smell and smell? It's it's the Holy Spirit that's coming out of this child. And of course, it was also used in confirmation, of course, at my ordination as a priest. Prison oil was put on my hands. The Holy Spirit, quite literally, means put into my hands to, uh, to offer sacrifice to the of God. So with all that education involved, church is quite romantic when you think about it. And I do use a lot of prison oil. I don't never use very much of it, so why don't we use it? Come on, Godparents, I uh, can come around this way in the picture. <clears throat> Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his uh, people. He now anoints you with the prison of salvation so that you may remain as a member of Christ, peace, prophet, and faith unto eternal life. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, this child reborn through baptism is now called a child of God, for indeed she is. 
Through confirmation, she will receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and approaching the altar of the Lord, she will share at the table of his sacrifice and will uh, call upon God as Father in the midst of the church. Now in his name and in the spirit of adoption, adoption as sons and daughters, which we have all received, let us pray together as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And we have a very special blessing for mom and for dad and, and for the godparents and all gathered here. So to mom, the Lord God Almighty through his son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as the hope of eternal life shines forth upon their children. May he graciously bless the mother of this child so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her child, she may always remain united with her in thanksgiving. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May the God, by the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life, both in heaven and on earth, bless the father of this child, so that together with her, uh, with his wife, they may, uh, by word and example, prove to be the first witnesses of the faith of their child. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty, who by the water and by who by water and the Holy Spirit has given us new birth into eternal life, abundantly bless his faithful here present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people, and may he bestow uh, his peace upon all here in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Stay around and stay to life as much as you like here to take pictures. Thanks be to God. And let us all gather downstairs. Now I have the box for the candle. We'll get a little holy water, a reminder of baptism, and maybe at our first communion, uh, bless her with it, or her uh, baptism, uh, their, their date of baptism. We'll always bring that holy water out, sprinkle her in confirmation. Just a reminder that this is a reality that we live with. Now here's a little trivia for everybody. Now that we've had the baptism, uh, Father goes and throws all the water down the drain, right? That's what I do with the water. What do I do? Ah, I like that. She knows I don't throw it down the drain. That's what we fill the baptismal pots with, the holy water pots with. So what happens today is the water that we have here is going to be out there. And everybody now is going to be joining where they put their hand on that holy water into the baptism that the church is then figured into. So we are the body of Christ in that baptism of water. So again, everybody, stay as long as you like. Thank you for being here. And, uh, and go ahead and sit down now and, and take pictures as you need. You can go ahead and blow out the uh, baptismal candle for her. And thank you for being here. I appreciate it. As you can see, I can't do this by myself. <laughs> God bless everybody. And uh, now just uh, make yourself comfortable. Should I bring you stay so we can get some pictures with the two of you with them? Okay, good. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and do that, and I'll go ahead and get the water ready, and then tell me when you're ready. Okay. With him. Well, we're fine. Oh, yeah. Fix commonly. No, the black one. How about the first? I got this. Yeah. 
Anybody else want to picture? I want to do that. 